It is now time for our Great British Debate this hour. And I'm asking, should self-identification require a medical diagnosis? Now, this, of course, is following SNP Minister uh, Ash Regan's decision to resign over Nicola Sturgeon's gender recognition reform bill, which would allow Scots as young as 16 to change their legal gender by simply just signing a declaration. And explaining her resignation, Reagan said that her conscience would, not al conscience would not allow her to support a bill that may have negative implications for the safety and dignity of women and girls. So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, should self-identification require a medical diagnosis? Let's see what my panel make of that. I'm joined by Associate Editor at the Daily Mirror, Kevin Maguire, and former Conservative London mayoral candidate, Sean Bailey. Uh, Sean, what do you think about that? OK, so for me, I'll be honest, I'll be straight out there. I don't care if someone's trans, they can do whatever they like, they say whatever they like, I call them he, she, whatever. But the, and, and, you know, if I, I don't know how far I'd go with it, but ultimately, a man is a man, a woman is a woman. Look, I'm sorry, but that's, that's what I said. On a personal basis, this yeah. is a very easy thing to deal with. Yeah. You know, I'll call you whatever you want to be, yeah, and that's fine, fine and, and you present away. I think what, what your last guest missed is a challenge this will be to organisations. Yeah. If you run an all-girls school, for instance, and someone has self-identified as a girl and they are legally supported yeah. by that, you will not be able to, to make a decision for them not to come to the school or not, yeah. which presents you a problem with other parents who may have a problem. What do you do about changing rooms? What do you do about exactly. competitions? All exactly. of these things. And, of course, there is the thing about security. Some men will self-identify as a woman and, and, and be, be realistic about that, but also still be attracted to women. Is it correct to then put them in a women's change room if they still have the, the, the anatomical pieces that we consider uh, belong to men? And these are the challenges that that bill simply has not answered. Well, the, and the problem is not so much that someone wants to, you know, if, if all the medical supervisions that that person's gone through, all the necessary medical provisions to ensure that they are mentally stable and all the things, and da, 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 then I'm more inclined to feel comfortable with the shared space of somebody who has maybe transitioned. and mm. I'm more likely to feel comfortable with that. I know they've gone through the checks and balances. But if anyone can just go ahead and just say, oh, yeah, you know, I've decided I'm going to be a woman, you know, I'm just... But, but that that's... leaves it open, and that's the problem. Look, but people are talking about leaving it open to abuse, and I'm sure we'll cover that. And there is a... But I'm not even talking about the, uh, the, the abuse. I'm just talking about the reality of mm. people who are not doing it out of pace abuse. What we're looking at now is catering to the individual at the detriment of the larger group, and that larger group is women. And be clear, let's be clear, young girls. I have a 15-year-old daughter. Yeah. I might have a problem if she had to be in a change room mm. with 18-year-old boys, for instance, who, don't, who transitioned. Yeah. No, Kevin? Yeah, no, I, I, I get all that. Mm. And I think it's about... 100,000 people in the mm. trans community, the last figure I saw, it's around that, so it's mm. a very small number in 60, uh, 267 yeah. million people. But it's an issue that's got to be tackled because I think they deserve to be treated mm. with sympathy and of dignity course. and people should be able to live their lives how, how, they, they, want, how they want. And at the same time, I don't want to be a bloke shouting at women. Yes, yeah, so another, not another at the bloke of women, though. shouting at I just don't, I, I yeah. don't want to be that. And I like it when the debate, and I thought mm. your debate was civil, which too often this debate isn't. Mm -hmm. But trans people say the current system is very bureaucratic, mm. cold and humiliating uh, to, to, ch to change your, your, your gender. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure there is a way we can do it better. And then you have to look on what happens with women-only spaces at the exactly. moment and sport, because biological sex does matter. So I, I think if we, if we discuss it and we debate it and we listen... I'm sure we can get a consensus and get somewhere to allay your fears, which I fully understand. But it's too but quick. Of course, but it's too quick. Yeah, Nicholas but we, Sturgeon coming, pressing ahead with this thing. Yeah, but, it's too quick. But um, it's, it's, it's real. I'd, I'd like to see what's happened in other countries. We heard Ireland and others mentioned saying mm. it's not been a problem. I'd, I'd like to see if that's, that is the case. What can we learn? Rather than just go for British exceptionalism of just doing it our own way, look what's happened elsewhere in the world. And I think we've also got to be very careful mm. not to somehow portray... Uh, inadvertently or otherwise, every trans woman is a, is a potential predator.